thank you for all being here and thank you for my art for all of your efforts and support with this cause and um, with all that you said with put into it. Um, and I was lucky and fortunate to go to Standing Rock with Tony Bea, who actually really inspired me to go there. Um, he went before with a group of friends and um, I think uh, the Facebook and social media being able to have um, to really know what was going on there through your community and your friends um, really inspired and, and was the pull for me to go there because I knew what was happening. It was hard to, on the mainstream media, see what was going on. And um, in particular on um, the night where the water cannons went off, that was when the conversation started with uh, Tony and, and saying, you know, we gotta go up there and we just took off. And, and did what we could. Um, my goal was not to capture a photograph. Um, I really wanted to just go there and be on the ground floor and uh, we put to use. Um, a lot of people don't know that my dad was ill, dying of cancer, and my mom and him drove all the way over there. And the last place he went was to Standing Rock, and they were there on the first, very beginning of the first, um, I think, month and a half and my mom cooked food and my dad was blind and he went to the river and, and I saw pictures of him and so he, you know, having my mom and dad come all the way from the Pacific Northwest to Washington State all the way over there um, really was also another personal um, factor in me going there and um, my mom was very adamant about me, you know, trying to help as it went when Tony and I went, and we went with George Alexander, who's a painter, who a lot of you may know. Um, once we arrived, it was it was a lot going on. I mean, the um, Obama administration had denied access um, to the building of the pipeline, which was a huge celebration. And we stopped on the side of uh, we found a, a water down um, somewhere along. I can't remember where it was. Maybe Tony, you remember where that was? on the highway <laughs> and we, yeah, we dropped some tobacco down and, and we prayed and we were so excited about that and because we were going into at that time which the photo was named December 5th uh, 2016 for uh, no spiritual surrender and um, so going there we uh, George had made um, uh, gas masks for us and because we thought okay this could be a very dangerous situation that we're putting ourselves into and I thought it was really amazing that uh, Tony said well you know, you put your intention into things you know what is it that you that you want and him forgetting it was having the intention of that we're going to be safe and that we're going to be okay and um, and then we got there and it was late at night and we were welcomed with open arms to um, a camp. It was an art camp through a connection that Tony had, and um, there was art and, and protest um, patches and things everywhere. Maybe you could tell me what is the what was the art camp and how did we IP3. get IP3? IP3. 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 And then um, we were welcomed with open arms, given the fact that I hadn't been there, you know, to stand or till the very end, and. Um, was able to make it happen right there at the you know the tail end and, and capture that image that you guys have seen um, see the promotion that I have graciously done. What else? <laughs> um, Tell us about the photo. The photo. Okay, so um, I had a really hard time with going there as a photographer because I'd seen so many people take pictures and and put it all over social media which is great because then you can see what's going on and but being a photographer for you know a living i didn't want to go there and be okay i'm taking pictures because i want to do this for any you know personal reasons or financial reasons i was just really just at my it was like a couple reaction once that um the fire cans went off i was like you know i could do my support from afar which so many people did and I've heard with a lot of people that I talk to at my booths and art shows and on you know, personal messages that they feel guilty for not have been able to show up and go there. And I tell them, no, I mean, it was a, a mutual effort, a global effort. You know, I traveled to nine countries this last summer and I was 
in, in all those countries, I had to put my feelers out with people who knew about it and who supported it. And it was amazing how many people did. And you know, <clears throat> can't travel all the way over there to kids. They have families and stuff. And um, so with that said, um, I went and had the opportunity to go because I'm like, I can drive in the snow and I didn't, you know, didn't have a place to stay. And that's where, you know, the team, uh, the trio of, of George and Tony and I were like mobbed up there after the, um, that night. And, um, and so we were eating in the, we called it the burrito because it's where we would eat their food and the, the building structure looked kind of like a burrito. <laughs> so we were like, and we met so many people. They weren't, it wasn't an indigenous protest. This was a, you know, a, this was a personal, like, these were a humanitarian issue, you know, not an indigenous thing. And that's why, you know, a lot of people, in, the, in some of the mainstream media, it looks like it was an indigenous thing. And it wasn't. You go up there and you just meet people from, there were languages being spoken from all over the place. And then we were in the Navajo um, breakfast camp. We went over there and, and grabbed some food and uh, the people that were serving, helping clean and do the dishes, I think were from Norway or Sweden or something. You know, it was, it was very, um, uh, it was an amazing collaborative feeling. And um, so going there to take this photo where, where the photo was created was um, I was sitting in that burrito and everybody had gone out to the front lines and I was still just sitting there. I was, I was actually by myself for a little while and I was like, I, it took me a long time to gear up to get out there and bring my camera to the, to the front lines. I could see people with their protest signs marching up and there's this beautiful photo. I, I have a lot of B-roll that I haven't shown people, but they're marching up and you can just see the silhouette of them on the ridge line and on the right side is the burial grounds where there's a keep off sign, you know, for people that, where the burials were being dug up and they're marching and was headed out. And I showed up, I wasn't there right on the front, which normally, you know, being a photographer, I want to get the best spot, I want to get the feel of where the lay of the land, you know, and then I'm like, okay, but I was the last one for some reason, just because I was still kind of struggling with using my camera to tell the story when I wanted to be there for so much more like everyone else had done. And um, when I went out there, um, Tony and I made our way down there, and, and he you gave me a little bit of encouragement. And there was a aid truck, and I stood up on top of the aid truck to look and get a high perspective, you know, like, you know, an ego eye perspective. What is going on here? And I didn't quite cut it. So then I went up this slippery snow embankment, and up I was like barbed wire fencing, and I like kind of crawled myself up, like snow falling everywhere. And um, I got to look at everything that was going on from left to right where the line, the front line was going. And, and we met at the bridge, I think it's um, Backwater Bridge. And that's where a lot of the stuff, that's what brought me, that was what happened the night on there, on the bridge. And um, I look off in the distance, and I don't know if you may know, many know that there was a canoe that went to Standing Rock. And the canoe were um, people I was raised with and singing and dancing from Alaska Native Cultural Heritage Association while growing up with my twin sister. And we traveled all over sharing my songs and stories. And that man I ended up doing the canoe journey with this year. And the, those people are my family. And so they had already gone out. You know, and I was also like, oh, I missed the boat. I should have been there with them. <laughs> and, um, so then, out of nowhere, there's the blizzard, negative 40 degrees. The camp has had the most capacity of people there. If you went to the casino, people, there were going to rooms. I, went, I think I traveled three or four different rooms. There were people with eight to 12 people in one room. People were sleeping in the foyer. And, and I mean, trying to get charged for your phone was a, was a catastrophe. <laughs> but um, I think I got, a, I got a sneak in a shower in one of those hotel rooms, which was great. And, um, but seeing, you know, looking up from that bird's eye view, I see out of nowhere a button blanket and a man marching through the snow with my regalia, what I, you know, what I raised, what I was raised showing and wearing proudly. And on the back of it, which probably a lot of you know, um, that you, you show your clan on the back. So it's it, eagle or raven of the two top moorities. And so I see this button blanket and it's predominant in this blizzard. And I'm like, what? So I'm like, I'm just trying to run down there and get a picture of him to say thank you to the um, my family members that brought the canoe, that my Tlingit people that went to Standing Rock before me, and say, hey, look, here was someone else. 
here, you know, people showed up again, you know. And then it was just a split second decision to just run across the <coughs> middle of the, of the line. One shot, and that was when the gas mask man and the, holding the um, American flag appeared. I did not see him as my front and subject matter at all. My whole goal was just to take a personal picture for the, for the clean kit, wearing the button rope blanket, and um, it was just the formation just um, formed. And since this photo has been out, um, a couple of other um, shows and things like that, I've had an opportunity to meet a lot of the Marines and vets that have a little bit more knowledge about that formation, which is interesting. It's a V formation that people would, military would use as a, a militant formation. And so there is that natural V formation, but these are people that don't all know each other. And it wasn't intended, obviously, but there's like a, a crazy spiritual element to that layer of the Marines meeting with the water protectors. And it just, and there it is. <laughs> so I was very fortunate to be there for a little bit of time I, I was there. And I'm happy to share it all with you guys. Thank you.